Okay, counselor. Uh, it looked like last Wednesday, um, let me get the case right, NCAA v. Alston um, in the Supreme Court of the United States. It sure looked like, you know, the uh, justices ran like a matchup zone on the NCAA lawyers and confused the hell out of them like it was a Syracuse first or second round game, Jay. I mean, it, everything that I read, it made it seem like when uh, uh, an opinion may in this case be issued in May that that change is coming. Well, can you can you, you know, put in layman's terms what happened, what you think is happening or what will happen here with the NCAA, Jay? Yeah, well, for, first, Rich, I think change is coming anyway, irrespective of what the Supreme Court does. But there, there's a case before the Supreme Court now. It's, it's called the Alston case. And the case is really about whether the NCAA can put caps on educational expenses. So it's not just they, they can't just say, all right, you get, uh, you get a scholarship and a stipend and that's it. If a school wants to give a, a, an athlete a laptop or something, something like that that goes toward education, right now they can't do that. That would be an NCAA violation. So that, that's what the case is about. It's chipping away at the amateurism principle. Now, what I would tell you is, is trying to read the tea leaves, they would say, or trying to predict what the Supreme Court will do or decide from oral argument is, is – a fool's errand. It's it's more difficult than trying to pick the you know trying to pick games in the sixty eight team bracket. Um, but longtime observers of the court, you know, not not people that look at sports cases, but but are, are sitting there and going over all longtime observers that have covered this forever have said, that, based on my experience, this is not good for the NCAA. This is not a good sign for them. Uh, their arguments were were beaten up pretty hard. And so one of the things that, that happens is, or that can happen, is a justice can have a particular opinion and then stress test that opinion by asking questions that are opposite to what they think. So, so you, you can't always rely on what's asked as a forecast of what's going to happen, but, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's going to be favorable, favorable to the NCAA. And the funny part, Rich, was they asked for this. They're the ones that took this case to the Supreme Court. So if they lose it, uh, all you have to do is look to Indianapolis saying, why did you do that? You, you actually had some pretty good case law on your side with the O'Bannon case. Uh, why, would you, why would you do that? Um, but they did it. And, uh, look, I, I think they're arguing a house of cards, frankly. But, uh, but they've, they've received deference from the courts over the years. But I think that deference is waning, and, and I think the, uh, the Supreme Court oral argument was a, a pretty good sign that that's the case. So then what happens? I mean, does, uh, does the way that we, we, we see business done uh, change? Like, are players going to get yes. paid or name and likeness image and stuff like that? Or what, what do you got? What do you think is going to come up? I think they're going to get name, image, and likeness coming forward, um, that this is going to open that up. The NCAA should have done it already. Um, they could solve all of this by just passing less restrictive rules and allowing the players the same economic rights as literally everyone else. Like, as you know, as you know, Rich, uh, non-athlete students get more scholarships than, than athletes. So, so are we saying they're paid, but yet they're not, they're not restricted in any way as to what they can earn or accept from their school or from anybody else in the free market, whatever. Um, so the idea that, that the schools get together as a cartel and restrict athletes, I don't think is sustainable in the long term. I'm surprised it's lasted this long, frankly. But the NCAA could have made these rules. And what we're seeing is states are passing name, image, and likeness laws right now. And the reason they're doing it is because California did it, Florida did it, and other states are afraid they're going to be left behind and they're going to be uh, out of luck for, for recruiting. And, and that sort of, I think, uh, makes the argument that this is what competition looks like, that when, when, when uh, there's competition for player services, people are willing to pay and they're willing to allow all this stuff. Um, they know w- what's the most important thing. It's not, it's not who has the best coach, it's who has the best players. Now, coaches are important, but if you don't have players, you, know, you can have the greatest coach ever. Gr- uh, the greatest coach with bad players loses, and the worst coach with good players wins. 
um, you know, you, you have to have good players and, uh, and they're worth a lot more than a scholarship. And I think that's becoming pretty clear to everybody. So put your experience of uh, being a trial lawyer and a uh, college basketball analyst all together, Jay, uh, if you think, uh, the, uh, the Supreme court's going to upset things here, what are they, the 12 seed against the five seed, uh, uh, NCAA, or is it a 12, five matchup? What do you got at eight, nine? Uh, is it I the UMBC I, I 16? Yeah, ba- they, based on, how long do they go here? You know, based on the way I, yeah, based on the way I view view the law, the antitrust law, and mm-hmm. the way the NCAA behaves, and what I heard out of the one-hour oral argument, uh, I think the NCAA loses this case, and I think going forward, they're going to lose a lot more of them. Now, they may not lose every one, but they're not going to win them all either. They used to win them all because the, the courts used to, used to give them an unbelievable amount of deference, but I think they see now this is a multi-billion dollar business. How can you claim somehow that uh, that this is this is amateur. Um, they, they see through it. It's it's so obvious, and it's the one area where the NCAA has never evolved. They, they've never they've never budged an inch on athletes. But but man, you you tell them, hey, you can make a billion dollars if you have a playoff, even though they they a college football playoff, even though they said for years, well, we can't do it. It's impossible. Here are all the reasons why. A uh, billion dollars. Oh, okay, we got one the next year. Uh, you know, it's, it's ludicrous to suggest that we can't do name, image, and likeness. Of course we can. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.